Chapter Twenty Three of The Life of Benjamin Franklin. Recording by Greg Giordano. The Life of Benjamin Franklin by Samuel G. Goodrich. Chapter Twenty Three. Preliminary Address to the Pennsylvania Almanac, entitled Poor Richard's Almanac for the Year Seventeen Fifty Eight. I have heard that nothing gives an author so great pleasure as to find his works respectfully quoted by other learned authors this pleasure i have seldom enjoyed for though i have been if i may say it without vanity an eminent author of almanacs annually and now a full quarter of a century my brother authors in the same way for what reason i know not have ever been very sparing in their applauses and no other author has taken the least notice of me. So that, did not my writings produce me some solid pudding, the great deficiency of praise would have quite discouraged me. I concluded, at length, that the people were the best judges of my merit, for they buy my works, and besides, in my rambles, where I am not personally known, I have frequently heard one or other of my adages repeated, with, as poor richard says at the end this gives me some satisfaction as it showed not only that my instructions were regarded but discovered likewise some respect for my authority and i own that to encourage the practice of remembering and repeating those wise sentences i have sometimes quoted myself with great gravity judge then how much i have been gratified by an incident which i am going to relate to you I stopped my horse lately, where a great number of people were collected at an auction of merchants' goods. The hour of sale not being come, they were conversing on the badness of the times, and one of the company called to a plain, clean, old man with white locks, Pray, Father Abraham, what think ye of the times? Won't these heavy taxes quite ruin the country? How shall we ever be able to pay them? What would you advise us to? father abraham stood up and replied if you have my advice i'll give it to you in short for a word to the wise is enough and many words won't fill a bushel as poor richard says they joined in desiring him to speak his mind and gathering round him he proceeded as follows friends says he and neighbors the taxes are indeed very heavy and if those laid on by the government were the only ones we had to pay we might more easily discharge them but we have many others and much more grievous to some of us we are taxed twice as much by our idleness three times as much by our pride and four times as much by our folly and from these taxes the commissioners cannot ease or deliver us by allowing an abatement however let us hearken to good advice and something may be done for us God helps them that help themselves, as poor Richard says in his almanac. It would be thought a hard government that should tax its people one-tenth part of their time to be employed in its service. But idleness taxes many of us much more if we reckon all that is spent in absolute sloth, or doing of nothing, with that which is spent in idle employments, or amusements that amount to nothing. Sloth by bringing on diseases absolutely shortens life sloth like rust consumes faster than labor wears while the key often used is always bright as poor richard says but dost thou love life then do not squander time for that's the stuff life is made of as poor richard says how much more then is necessary do we spend in sleep forgetting that the sleeping fox catches no poultry and that there will be sleeping enough in the grave as poor richard says if time be of all things the most precious wasting time must be as poor richard says the greatest prodigality since as he elsewhere tells us lost time is never found again and what we call time enough always proves little enough let us then up and be doing and doing to the purpose so by diligence shall we do more with less perplexity 
sloth makes all things difficult but industry all easy as poor richard says and he that riseth late must trot all day and shall scarce overtake his business at night while laziness travels so slowly that poverty soon overtakes him as we read in poor richard who adds drive thy business let not that drive thee and early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise so what signifies wishing and hoping for better times we make these times better if we bestir ourselves industry needs not wish as poor richard says he that lives upon hope will die fasting there are no gains without pains then help hands for i have no lands or if i have they are smartly taxed and as poor richard likewise observes he that hath a trade hath an estate and he that hath a calling hath an office of profit and honour but then the trade must be worked at and the calling well followed or neither the estate nor the office will enable us to pay our taxes if we are industrious we shall never starve for as poor richard says at the working man's house hunger looks in but dares not enter nor will the bailiff or the constable enter for industry pays debts but despair increaseth them says poor richard what though you have found no treasure nor has any rich relation left you a legacy diligence is the mother of good luck as poor richard says and god gives all things to industry then plough deep while sluggards sleep and you will have corn to sell and to keep says poor dick work while it is called to-day for you know not how much you may be hindered to-morrow which makes poor richard say one to-day is worth two to-morrows and further have you somewhat to do to-morrow do it to-day if you were a servant would you not be ashamed that a good master shall catch you idle are you then your own master be ashamed to catch yourself idle as poor dick says when there is so much to be done for yourself your family and your gracious king be up by peep of day let not the sun look down and say inglorious here he lies handle your tools without mittens remember that the cat in gloves catches no mice as poor richard says it is true there is much to be done and perhaps you are weak-handed but stick to it steadily and you will see great effects for continual dropping wears away stones and by diligence and patience the mouse ate into the cable and light strokes fell great oaks as poor richard says in his almanac the year i cannot just now remember methinks i hear some of you say must a man afford himself no leisure i will tell thee my friend what poor richard says employ thy time well if thou meanest to gain leisure and since thou art not sure of a minute throw not away an hour leisure is time for doing something useful this leisure the diligent man will obtain but the lazy man never so that as poor richard says a life of leisure and a life of laziness are two things do you imagine that sloth will afford you one more comfort than labor no for as poor richard says troubles spring from idleness and grievous toils from needless ease many without labor will live by their own wits only but they break for want of stock whereas industry gives comfort and plenty and respect fly pleasures and they'll follow you the diligent spinner has a large shift and now i have a sheep and a cow everybody bids me good morrow all which is well said by poor richard but with our industry we must likewise be steady and settled and careful and oversee our own affairs with our own eyes and not trust too much to others for as poor richard says i never saw an oft removed tree nor yet an oft removed family that throve so well as one that settled be and again three removes are as bad as a fire and again keep thy shop and thy shop will keep thee and again if you would have your business done go 
if not send. And again, he that by the plough would thrive, himself must either hold or drive. And again, the eye of the master will do more work than both his hands. And again, want of care does us more damage than want of knowledge. And again, not to oversee workmen is to leave them your purse open. Trusting too much to others' care is the ruin of many. For, as the almanac says, in the affairs of the world, men are saved not by faith, but by the want of it. By a man's own care is profitable. For, saith poor Dick, learning is to the studious and riches to the careful, as well as power to the bold, and heaven to the virtuous. And further, if you would have a faithful servant, and one that you like, serve yourself. And again, he adviseth to circumspection and care, even in the smallest matters, because sometimes a little neglect may breed great mischief, adding, for want of a nail the shoe was lost, for want of a shoe the horse was lost, and for want of a horse the rider was lost, being overtaken and slain by the enemy, all for want of care about a horse shoe nail. So much for industry, my friends, and attention to one's own business. But to these we must add frugality. If we would make our industry more certainly successful, a man may, if he knows not how to save as he gets, keep his nose all his life to the grindstone, and die not worth a groat at last. A fat kitchen makes a lean will, as poor Richard says, and many estates are spent in the getting, since women for tea forsook spinning and knitting, and men for punch forsook hewing and splitting. If you would be wealthy, says he, in another almanac, think of saving as well as of getting. The Indies have not made Spain rich, because her alcoves are greater than her incomes. Away then with your expensive follies, and you will not have much cause to complain of hard times, heavy taxes, and chargeable families. For, as poor Dick says, women in wine, game in deceit, make the wealth small, and the want great. And, further, what maintains one vice would bring up two children. You may think, perhaps, that a little tea, or a little punch now and then, diet a little more costly, clothes a little finer, and a little entertainment now and then, can be no great matter. But remember what poor Richard says. Many a little makes a mickle. And further, beware of little expenses. A small leak will sink a great ship. And again, who dainties love shall beggars prove. And moreover, fools make feasts, and wise men eat them. Here you are all got together at this sale of fineries and knick-knacks. You call them goods, but if you do not take care, they will prove evils to some of you. You expect they will be sold cheap, and perhaps they may for less than they cost. But if you have no occasion for them, they must be dear to you. Remember what poor Richard says, Buy what thou hast no need of, and ere long thou shalt sell thy necessaries. And again, at a great pennyworth pause a while, he means that perhaps the cheapness is apparent only, or not real, or the bargain, by straightening thee in thy business, may do thee more harm than good. For in another place, he says, many have been ruined by buying good pennyworths. Again, as poor Richard says, it is foolish to lay out money in a purchase of repentance. And yet this folly is practiced every day at auctions for want of minding the almanac. Wise men, as poor Dick says, learn by others' harms, fools scarcely by their own. But Felix quem facunt eliana percula catum, many a one, for the sake of finery on the back, have gone with a hungry belly, and half starved their families. Silk and satins, scarlet and velvets, as poor Richard says, put out the kitchen fire. These are not the necessaries of life. They can scarcely be called the conveniences, yet only because they look pretty. How many want to have them? The artificial wants of mankind, 
thus become more numerous than the natural and as poor dick says for one poor person there are a hundred indigent by these and other extravagances the genteel are reduced to poverty and forced to borrow of those whom they formerly despised but who through industry and frugality have maintained their standing in which case it appears plainly a ploughman on his legs is higher than a gentleman on his knees as poor richard says perhaps they have had a small estate left them which they knew not the getting of they think it is day and will never be night that a little to be spent out of so much is not worth minding a child and a fool as poor richard says imagine twenty shillings in twenty years can never be spent but always be taking out of the meal-tub and never putting in soon comes to the bottom then as poor dick says when the well is dry they know the worth of water but this they might have known before if they had taken his advice if you would know the value of money go and try to borrow some for he that goes a borrowing goes a sorrowing and indeed so does he that lends to such people when he goes to get it in again poor dick further advises and says fond pride of dress is sure a very curse ere fancy you consult consult your purse and again pride is as loud a beggar as want and a great deal more saucy when you have bought one fine thing you must buy ten more that your appearance may be all of a piece but poor dick says it is easier to suppress the first desire than to satisfy all that follow it and it is as truly folly for the poor to ape the rich as the frog to swell in order to equal the ox vessels large may venture more but little boats should keep near shore tis however a folly soon punished for pride that dines on vanity sups on contempt as poor richard says and in another place pride breakfasted with plenty dined with poverty and supped with infamy and after all of what use is this pride of appearance for which so much is risked so much is suffered it cannot promote health or ease pain it makes no increase of merit in the person it hastens misfortune what is a butterfly at best is but a caterpillar dressed the gaudy fops is pictured just as poor richard says but what madness must it be to run in debt for these superfluities we are offered by the terms of the sale six months credit and that perhaps has induced some of us to attend it because we cannot spare the ready money and hope now to be fine without it but ah think what you do when you run in debt you give to another power over your liberty if you cannot pay at the time you will be ashamed to see your creditor you will be in fear when you speak to him you will make poor pitiful sneaking excuses and by degrees come to lose your veracity and sink into base downright lying for as poor richard says the second vice is lying the first is running in debt and again to the same purpose lying rides upon debt's back whereas a free-born englishman ought not to be ashamed nor afraid to speak to any man living but poverty often deprives a man of all spirit and virtue it is hard for an empty bag to stand upright as poor richard truly says what would you think of that prince or that government who would issue an edict forbidding you to dress like a gentleman or gentlewoman on pain of imprisonment or servitude would you not say that you were free have a right to dress as you please and that such an edict would be a breach of your privileges and such a government tyrannical and yet you are about to put yourself under that tyranny when you run in debt for such dress your creditor has authority at his pleasure to deprive you of your liberty by confining you in jail for life or by selling you for a servant if you should not be able to pay him when you have got your bargain you may perhaps think little of payment but creditors poor richard tells us have better memories than debtors and in another place he says creditors are a superstitious sect great observers of set days and times 
the day comes round before you are aware and the demand is made before you are prepared to satisfy it or if you bear your debt in mind the term which at first seems so long will as it lessens appear extremely short time will seem to have added wings to his heels as well as to his shoulders those have a short lent saith poor richard who owe money to be paid at easter then since as he says the borrower is a slave to the lender and the debtor to the creditor disdain the chain preserve your freedom and maintain your independency be industrious and free be frugal and free at present perhaps you may think yourselves in thriving circumstances and that you can bear a little extravagance without injury but for age and want save while you may no morning sun lasts a whole day as poor richard says gain may be temporary and uncertain but ever while you live expense is constant and certain and it is easier to build two chimneys than to keep one in fuel as poor richard says so rather go to bed supperless than rise in debt get what you can and what you get hold tis the stone that will turn all your lead into gold as poor richard says and when you have got the philosopher's stone sure you will no longer complain of bad times or the difficulty of paying taxes this doctrine my friends is reason and wisdom but after all do not depend too much upon your own industry and frugality and prudence though excellent things for they be blasted without the blessing of heaven and therefore ask that blessing humbly and be not uncharitable to those that at present seem to want it but comfort and help them remember job suffered and was afterwards prosperous and now to conclude experience keeps a dear school but fools will learn in no other and scarce in that for it is true we may give advice but we cannot give conduct as poor richard says however remember this they that will not be counselled cannot be helped as poor richard says and further that if you will not hear reason she will surely wrap your knuckles thus the old gentleman ended his harangue the people heard it and approved the doctrine and immediately practised the contrary just as if it had been a common sermon for the auction opened and they began to buy extravagantly notwithstanding all his cautions and their own fear of taxes i found the good man had thoroughly studied my almanacs and digested all i had dropped on those topics during the course of twenty-five years the frequent mention he made of me must have tired every one else but my vanity was wonderfully delighted with it though i was conscious that not a tenth part of the wisdom was my own which he ascribed to me but rather the gleanings that i have made of the sense of all ages and nations however i resolved to be the better for the echo of it and though i had at first determined to buy stuff for a new coat i went away resolved to wear my old one a little longer reader if thou wilt do the same thy profit will be as great as mine i am as ever thine to serve thee richard saunders End of chapter 23 Recording by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida